Praise the Lord, friends. Thomas Manton IV. I have a very powerful message <laughs> today. I want to say three things in, uh, in, in preliminary to it that are kind of off the subject, but a few things that need to be uh, said uh, are very important. Um, welcome all you that are coming on. God bless you. Hit the share button and share this message. I'm speaking about of God, and the Lord gave me this great visitation last week where he, he spoke to me like in a, I just saw him and I saw, it, he said, speak about my love, and today, that was volume one, today I want to pick up in volume two, so I'm speaking to you as a good pastor, as an intercessor, of course I'm the prophet, you know that, but I'm not in the prophetic, you know, you never know when it's going to just come and flow. The Holy Spirit can do as he wants to because he's the boss. He's our boss. He's my boss. But um, people need a lot of teaching and a lot of training, a lot of uh, deliverance from issues, and I'm going to get into that. So last week I shared a lot of scriptures, and I'll share more today, several about the love of God. But the Lord spoke to me today, amazingly. He said, I want you to begin to speak about self-love. <laughs> My love also includes self-love. You taking care of yourself. You feeling good about yourself. And before, uh, God, it's so powerful. Jeremiah 29, 11 said, I know the plans that I think Toward you and have toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a great future and a great hope. But before I go further into that, I want to say three. I want to say there's four things that are absolutely devastating to any life that wants to be productive. Number one is no decisions. Number two is wrong decisions. Number... <laughs> Number three is the wrong people. <laughs> and number four is misplaced trust. You can trace every calamity in your life to misplaced trust. And I'm going to explain the four of those in a minute, but I want to quote Bishop T.D. Jakes on something he said that was really powerful because, you know, he's built a huge church. You know, he has friends and lovers and I don't mean uh, 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 Eros lovers, I mean agape lovers, yeah? You know, people that love him as a spiritual father, as a man of God, as a great preacher, great uh, successful businessman, you know, successful. Uh, his middle name is Dexter, and he made one of his companies Dexterity something. So it's his name is in there. He's a brilliant man. You know, you don't see anybody that builds anything great unless they have this visionary brilliance in them. It's really... Uh, quite frustrating when you don't have enough of a, an outlet for all the brilliance that God puts in you. And I, I know about that, but it's all being solved all the time more and more. So he said, because at that level, any level, you have a lot of haters, you have a lot of friends, you have a lot of haters, right? So, so he pro I'm, I know he had a lot of good people, and one day someone wakes up crazy and decides to walk away from you, and he preached this message one time. He says, if they want to go, let them go. And just let them go. Don't look for them. Don't chase them. Don't try to figure it out. Just let them walk, you know. And as the saying goes, I think I heard him say this too, but I like it. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord splits you on the way out. Praise the Lord. Not everybody's okay. And that's okay. Write it down. Oh, it's a good statement. Let me explain these other things. No decisions. Uh, uh, before, let me, let me complete that in a positive way. As long as you're okay, that's okay. <laughs> Uko sawa, eco sawa, niko sawa. Amen. Eco, uko, niko. Swahili. I'm blessed, you're blessed, we're blessed. Praise the Lord. 
about a keyway. As long as you're as long as you're okay, it's okay. That's the main thing. Then you, you'll always sail forward. But I wonder about a lot of people. Now here's the thing. People that come one way and flee seven ways, they're like the devil. <laughs> they're like the devil, you know? They're like the friends of the devil. I don't understand that. But I do understand it because I know, you know, we live in a crazy world and there's crazy people. Look at Pencil Neck Shifty Shift in America. He's now, the, he's going to be mocked for eternity. And pathetic, Nancy, pathetic Pelosi and Penguin, wah, 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 wah. He walks like he waddles, you know. You know, wah, wah, wah. You know the penguin in the Batman movie? Wah, wah, wah. He talks like that. He has a funny voice and he has a long thing he's smoking, you know. These people, maybe they're smoking stuff. I don't know. From California, you never know. Woo, you know. What they're doing. Shifty shift. That man is insane. So, I mean... How many, know, how many know I prophesied all this stuff will be broken? Did I say it? When it looked like it was really bad. Oh, no, they're going to impeach President Trump. I said, said, I said, says who? The devil and his ugly friends? No. And by the way, let me tell you again. Donald Trump will be reelected unanimously in the November 2020 election by a landslide. There's nobody that can touch him now or, or in the future. It's not possible. There's none of these Democrats have any popularity. They're the most mixed up group of people. And then people say, well, now Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, who I knew him, you know, rich businessman, like he has this bug against uh, He's a communist in, in hiding. I don't know what demon got into these people. And he said he's going to be funding stuff. Well, somebody said he doesn't, in the polls, he's not even meeting butt gig. If I said his name right, he's gay. So maybe that's a good terminology analogy. Praise the Lord. I didn't want to get political here for a minute, but you never know. So but his name is butt gig. Yeah, he has a gig in his butt. That's right. Yeah, uh huh. good name for him. He's more, he's more ahead, openly gay man. He's, he's ahead of Bloomberg, and Bloomberg was the mayor of New York, did a good job in New York. But I don't know what's wrong with him now. I don't understand. What happens to people? What happens to people? Where are the sane people? Trump is sane. He may look a little bit insane sometimes, but man, he's in his right mind, in the right heart, in the right way, in the right frame, the right thing. And people are actually saying, I, I posted a video today, I found this video, and these, uh, someone said, in America, a man of color, he said, don't call me African-American, I've never been to Africa. I said, that's a really good point. I'm not, I'm not African, I've never been to Africa. I was born in America. So I don't know what we call him, American, just call him American, call me American, right? But this guy says, He's the best president we ever had because they're looking at the results. It's absolutely amazing what's happening. The best economy, the lowest unemployment in history. And everything he said he was going to do, he was going to do. So it's kind of like you got to look at who's like the devil and who's like God. The man is really kind of walking in the way of God because he says something that's even radical and powerful and seems impossible. But then it happens. Obama, <laughs> yeesh, he said, Obama, he said, he said, oh, Trump, he says he's going to give jo make jobs, and how's he going to do it? Does he have a magic wand? <laughs> Does he have, uh, what, what's his, but it happened. Look what happened in just three years. Someone lift your hands and thank God for what's going on. And then in the U.K., Boris, of all people. Boris, you know, with the wild hair blowing in the British breeze, you know. Conservative guy gets elected in the midst of a liberal chaos. And there's a warfare going on because now they're canceling Franklin Graham's uh, stadium crusades because he says uh, what the Bible says about sin. And certain people don't like that. You know, certain communities don't like that because they think what they're doing is okay. But according to the Bible, another story. 
So there's warfare going on, but it's amazing when good leadership gets in place. Someone said everything rises and falls on leadership. Rises or falls. Good leadership, things rise. Bad leadership, things fall. So God is merciful. He's not going to let the, let the wrong people, um, you know, get in the way of progress and destroy humanity. So also we have to pray for Kenya now. That's another story. Praise the Lord. But God already knows who's going to be the next president, and so do I, because he told me. On October 31st, I had a visitation from the Lord, and God spoke to me. The whole thing, and I am not going to tell it to anyone until he tells me to announce it publicly, and then I'll say it. So, um, it's amazing what's going on. Um, I told you the impeachment thing will fail. They're going to vote on Wednesday. Today's Sunday, right? In three days. Watch. It's going to be dropped. Who knows if they're going to try to come up with another thing to get in there. But already God had the stage set in the Senate that they already have the votes enough to cancel the whole thing. And they're going to do that. So no matter how much these people whine and scream and gnaw and gnash their teeth, God's plan is still going to go on. And then after that, of course, they'll, they'll try to do something else. But so what? They'll be defeated every step of the way. Because God has a good plan for America and for the world and for you and for me. He said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, the plans that I have for you, they're good. They're good thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a great future and a great hope. I love that. Now, no decisions is bad because you have to take a risk if you want to get anywhere. It's better to try something and not succeed fully in it or you learn something along the way than do nothing at all. You shouldn't be afraid of failing. You should be afraid of not taking a risk. <laughs> you should be afraid of not going for it. That should trouble you more than what if, what if, what if. It does, now, that doesn't mean that you just swing at anything that comes along and just hope it's going to work out. No, you, you know, to be successful in business, to be successful in anything, you have to know what you're doing. You have to know the market. You have to know your strategy. You have to be set up. You have to be ready. You have to know the downfalls and the pitfalls and things along the way. And you need to, you know, uh, execute things correctly if you want to get a good result. But not going for it is the worst part. So here's someone that's really a great manager of, an of, of, a, of, a, of a sales uh, entity that's a friend of mine. And I told him, I said, look here. Build your own company out of this. this and, and the person said to me, everybody loves them. All the customers prefer to talk to them and nobody else. Everybody's looking for them, always ringing their phone. I thought, you, you got it. You've got it. And what they're paying you or what you're going to do, what, what, are you going to work there the rest of your life? Come on. So I said, take all the, con listen to me, take all the context. They went, ooh, really? Yeah. Well, I have some, but. I said, have you been taking the contacts of all the customers? No. Now, you got to be careful with this because, you know, this may be some people consider an ethical issue. Now, if you go to a church and you want to mess with that church and try to steal from the church, we've seen people try to do that. You want to take everybody and try to, you know, uh, subvert the church and do it. And you can't do that. God can kill you. Praise the Lord. But in the business world, <laughs> It's more of an open game, right? So I thought you need to be clever. Find a way to make, to be a manufacturer of this yourself. Open up your own business. So let's say the person's making, I don't want to throw out numbers, you know, a, 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 what you'd consider a, a menial salary, right? Not so much. As a manager of, they work hard. They work all day. They work, like they start at like nine in the morning and, you know, they'll leave at nine at night. And then if there's a shipment coming in, they have to stay, even if it's till 10 o'clock. I mean, that's all right. I, I'm, not, I wouldn't, I'm not complaining about that. And, and they have to do And then there's another day they're doing a video shoot for promotional and all that. They want to do it on a certain day, but that happened to be that person's day off normally. Then they have to schedule that and take the next day off. So what? That's part of the deal. Right? 
But look, and that's all good. Because when you're, listen, when you're diligent, <laughs> God can, I'm talking about self-care, okay? I, I, I didn't leave the message. I'm in it. I know what I'm doing. Praise the Lord. I'm going to cover a lot of things here in a lot of ways. You have to take care of yourself. God said, I think good thoughts and have good plans for you. So it's not just for you to be an employee the rest of your life. If you have any spark of entrepreneurial ability in you, Praise the Lord. Now in the kingdom, I have to say this. There are people that God calls to be a number two and number three and number four, a supportive role, and that's their, that's their anointing. They're not going to go pastor a church. Amen. They're not going to put their name up on a lighted sign and say, here I am, this is my ministry now. You know, sometimes it's not like that. You, you know, God can set you in a thing, but in the business world, it doesn't make... Is, is a bit different, you understand? Because there's no eternal grace on the thing. It's just a business. It's going to die. It doesn't have eternal life. Oh my God, this is, this is deep. Wow. Write that down. The, a business does not have eternal life. Oh my God, I've never heard that before. That's the Holy Ghost. A business enterprise does not have eternal life. It's the occupy until I come thing that Jesus talked about. It's an entity that's here now that serves people things that they need <laughs> to have, you know, goods and services. Buy goods, you know, till number. <laughs> you know that thing on m -Pesa? Buy goods, pay bill. The pay bill is for a service, for a, uh, 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 an organized company. Buy goods is when you're buying something. doesn't have eternity it's like a commerce thing for now so the more business you could do the better but you know what you you can't like think well I want to be a business person come on you have to know what you want to do you got to plan it you can't ask other people for advice on that if you if you don't get the idea in here and here and it doesn't like possess you and consume you you don't got it you can't make it in anything like that so forget about asking anybody else. People ask me a lot, you know, questions like, forget about asking anybody else. God, you don't know? How can I tell you? Because even the answer that comes from me comes from my passion. It didn't come from your passion. Lift your hands. This is powerful what I'm saying here. Someone's going to get rich off this message. And I'm happy about that. I, my part of my assignment in the earth as a pastor, as a leader, is to make you rich. As a prophet... For you to get rich. I don't want to see no broke, poor people around me. People I know that didn't have 50 bob and some coins in their pocket were wearing torn clothes some years ago. They're around with us. And today, now you're sending me nice big m -paces and first fruits and all that. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I didn't ask for it. I didn't. By the way, this is first fruits time, the beginning of the year. By the way, another thing. Today is 222020. It's never going to happen again in our lifetime. In fact, they said it won't happen for another 900 years. I don't know where you're going to be in 900 years, but I ain't going to be here in Nairobi. No, sir. No, ma'am. <laughs> Are you going to be here, prophet, in the year 3010? No, I'm not. <laughs> Unless it's the millennial reign, but I'll ask God to send me to it. Give me New York or give me, I don't know where I want to be, Nairobi. Maybe, maybe, who knows? I'm joking around, but actually the Lord spoke to me. This thing about Kenya is an eternal assignment that's on my life. It's an etern it goes into eternity. People ask me, what about Kenya? I said, what about it? Talk to the boss. He's the one that arranged all of it. Someone said, no question is a bad question. True, because even when you ask a question that's not the right question, it goes in the air and it's something for you to process and learn and move to a greater level of intelligence anyway. So 2020. That's amazing. February 2nd, 2020. And people started sending me first fruits. People are writing me, calling me dad, spiritual dad, father. People are writing me from everywhere. Man of God, my, my father, my father. I got major leaders in other countries that call me their master. They call me their master prophet or whatever. They call me their... Master prophet, like, I didn't ask for that. I, I want to tell him, don't call me that. What are you going to do? 
Then you got these other people, you know, making their own stylized thing, calling themselves number one, number one, number one, something. I mean, whatever. Do your own marketing. It's okay. I mean, I hope you're good. I hope you're anointed. I hope so. I really do. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very positive about all of that. I, I hope so. I'm the number one thing. You know I, know, I know about five people that did that, and three of them I know personally, and uh, the other two I don't know personally, but they call themselves number one, and it really worked for them. So, who knows? But I guess they think of themselves as number one in something. Their confidence level speaks. I'm going to talk about that here in a few, in a few minutes. And um, it's going to rock your world, some of the things I'm going to say here today. Like I'm not doing it already. <laughs> so, business is like, you know, someone said all is fair in love and war. Well, no, all is fair in the business world, you know? They call it dog eat dog, rat race, the rat race, dog eat dog, you know, competition, you know, aggressive action. Then they, then they had the hostile corporate takeovers. There's a guy in America named Carl, Carl Icahn, I-C-A-H-N is his last name. You look him up on the, on the search, uh, Carl Icahn, I-C-A-H-N. He was a master at doing like hostile takeovers of companies. He find a way to find a pub, you know, a company that's going public or whatever public, and just buy to get in there and just take the company. Now somebody built that company, but when it went into the public domain, and then got available for him like a corporate raider they call him. Yeah, you know, the, all these things go on, and people make millions and billions of dollars, while other people are sitting around wondering what to do. They don't know what to do. Now, I'm glad that I'm bringing this under the anointing, not just as like a, 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 a seminar lesson or a teaching, because the Bible and also principles from God back all this up. Can you imagine that? And when you put it all together and put it, put it all together and shake it up, good measure, <laughs> running over, shaking together, running over, shall, you know, and you shake it all up and then you drink it, I was just at the health food store a while ago. I went to the, I dropped the stuff here and I went to the health food shop and I, I got this protein thing and I started drinking it and this other energy thing, is that goji berries and honey and uh, goji berries and green tea and uh, protein, some protein new thing. I saw it, I said, let me try that. Praise God. And, and um, it has a lot of ingredients in it and you shake it up and when you drink it, hello, it does something good for you in your life, in your physical health, in your energy level. Somebody bought me a, a jar of chia seeds. I never did that in my life. I'm doing some things like this last week I've never done in my life. I started eating avocados. Oh, they're so good here. <laughs> my Jesus. And you know, I, 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 thought, I thought, I know I'm not, I know I'm not stupid, okay? I, I'm really not. You, 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 you know that. You all know that. But I thought, my God, why didn't I figure that out? All you have to do is buy. You know, I used to buy the things and they were so hard and I just left it to someone else. You know, I thought maybe someone else had to prepare it and slice it and put salad. And in my mind, in my, you see, it's in my mind that the problem was in my mind. Some of the problem that you have is in your mind. You can't get out of your own way. With avocados, I couldn't get out of my own way. I was stuck in the road. Praise God. And the traffic jam in my, in my imagination with the thing. I was like, huh. You know, it's such a complicated thing because you, you touch them, you know, you touch them, you know, in the, in the shop where they are, and they're like, they're like rocks. Like if you threw this thing, you'd hit somebody, you'd kill them. It's like throwing, like throwing a little boulder at somebody, boom. If I want to break this glass at the back of this uh, studio here, I just throw psh, uh, the glass. If I threw a, an unripe avocado, that glass would break, wouldn't it? If I threw it real hard, like I'm, you know, Mickey Mantle, you know, oh, Mickey Mantle was the hitter. Who's the pitcher? Whew, you know, I throw it. It's what you'd hear, and you'd see glass flying everywhere. So that's what I was thinking. But then someone said to me, <laughs> someone said to me, just they take about two, three days to ripen. I thought, yeah. I kind of think I knew that, but I don't know if I really thought about it that much. And I just left them there. 
then two and a half days later, whatever, I go and I squeeze it again, and it's turned a little bit dark, a different color, and it's like, it's like a little bit mushy now. Not too much, because if it gets too much, you got to throw it. You've missed the time. You waited a day too long. And I thought, how do I open this thing? So I thought, here. I went over like this. I slapped it on the counter, and then I took a, I took a plate, whatever, and I just took a knife. <laughs> Imagine. I just took a knife and went like this. And then squeezed it open, threw the seat out, and looked at it and thought, it's like a half knot. I thought, that looks so good. Are you kidding me? So I took a little pepper, a little salt, and I just took a big spoon. I just went, I ate the whole thing standing there. Bless God. It was, and I had something. I had some uh, chips and some other things. I don't know, some crisps and some spicy crisp and a little feta cheese with oil or something. I said, this is so good, I'll do it again. So I got another one. Another one was ripe. So it was another bunch that's still hard like rocks, but it's another one. I pick, I just did it again, I thought. Lord, uh, Lord, he's looking at me like, <laughs> who knew, right? I knew, you figured it out. I thought, this is great. And then I'm reading how good avocados are for you. Then you got bananas, so you buy them every day. I have, I have a cabinet now that closes tight. It's airtight. Because you know those little bugs that come in? I hate those things. You know those little bugs that fly around when you leave fruits out? I hate those things. I hate those things. Oh, do I hate them. So I used to, when I didn't have that, put it in the, in the cabinet, I put it in the microwave. The microwave, you know? Just put it in the microwave. Don't anybody turn it on because we'd have an explosion of hot bananas. Just leave them in there because it's airtight, you know? And eat those things and avocados. Then somebody bought, okay, I was getting to this. Someone bought me a, a jar of chia seeds. So I asked somebody, what's this? I've heard of it. I believe you. I've been around, okay? I've heard of it. I, I've heard of them. But I never did it. They said, you just take them and pour it in any, anything you're drinking. And they swell up a little bit. You drink them. I said, they're good for you? Oh, they're very good for you. Oh my God. I haven't done it yet, but I cracked that thing open. Probably tonight or tomorrow, I'll crack it open and start doing the chia seed thing. Pour it in your juice, let them swell up, and you drink them. You know, they have that. I bought them in bottles before, but that's too expensive. You don't have to waste money. You can make things creatively, right? All these fruits and all these vegetables and all these things. Lift your hands. God is so good. All these animals. I was just driving on the Waiaki Way a few minutes ago. Can I make a confession? No, I shouldn't. Uh, I, I went to Sarit from here a while ago. I went to Sarit and I went shopping while y'all were setting up and having the, having the pre, pre, pre meet, pre-level meeting here. I was, went shopping to the health food store, so I went to Sarit. Then I figured I have to beat this traffic jam coming back, so I went all the way around, the arboretum and around. I know how to do it, man. I said, thank God I don't have a driver. It jingle would take all day to get here. Praise the Lord. I could do something in five minutes. I'm brilliant like that. By the way, I'm the best driver. I don't understand anybody not being able to drive. I had a guy the other day, I'm telling you, I was like shaking by the time I got done. I thought, never again. Get out and goodbye. I, no, I didn't say that. I'm very polite. I said, I told the person, tell him I said, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. Give me money and have a nice day. And I was telling one of my friends in the, in the government, a very high operative, I can't talk, a lot of top secret stuff going on. By the way, they're getting some stuff going on. And I have several friends like that. I was talking to one of them and I said, this guy didn't even know how to park the car. I said, can you imagine he parked my big van, he parked it right next to another car with the driver's door both sides, you know, the right side, right side, right side. And there was like this much space in between, and he just sat there, and I said, uh, <coughs> um, mm, can you move the vehicle a little bit over that way, because how are we going to get out, and how's the other person going to get in? You're going to start a world, you're going to start a war here in the parking lot. Someone's going to come out and see that, you know, God knows how they're going to be talking. So then he says, well, should I, that, this, this is the catch now. People always ask the question, he said, should I? Do that? I thought, no. Ah. Oh. Oh, let me think. 
what did I mean by saying, move the car? But by necessity, not because I, I was having a, a, you know, phantasmagoric uh, fantasy life thought. So that is my answer. I said, you're from here. <laughs> I said, you're from here. <laughs> Figure it out. You're supposed to know. And my friend from the government, he got mad. He was like, these guys, what, are you kidding me? How, how can someone do that? He said, Peep. He says, I don't care where they're from. I said, maybe from somewhere in the outer, outer regions of the villages or somewhere. You know, they never drove in, a, in the city. I, I don't know. He said, but it doesn't matter. They're supposed to know how to drive. So thank God you can take things into your own hands. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Take things into your own hands and don't always wait for everyone else to do everything for you. Although you have to have people in your life. But you have, here's the key. You have to have some time yourself to have that realm of soulless, the quantum of soulless, whatever, you know, that you can process things in your mind because you and you get along well. Praise the Lord. To a degree. Now, I'm going to teach a couple things here and to help you get along with yourself better because God wants to get along with you, but he wants you to get along with yourself, but he also wants everyone to get along with each other. So we need to pray also that God opens up people's hearts. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. God opens up people's hearts and we can get it filled with his love and we can all love one another. It's what I'm talking about. This is all love. This is a love talk. This is a love message. It's a love, it's a love thing. The love fest. It's all love. Prosperity and riches for you is God's love. Nice clothes on your body is God's love. Nice vehicle to drive you around and enjoy your life is God's love. A nice house to live in with colors and nice furniture is God's love. And if you've had any loss, if you have any suffering going on, when you don't have enough of what you want yet, lift your hands. It's coming. I prophesy you can have it. You can have it anyway. It still can happen. It still will happen. It still needs to happen. I just saw all these things. I was taking. I take pictures of things that I like to see. I take pictures of them with my phones. I just snap a photo so I could. Why? So you don't have to rip out. You know, the old days you'd have to get a magazine and rip the pages out and try to cut the frames and put it on a wall or put it in a book and then open that book once in a while. We call it like a dream book. Now you do it digitally. You just scroll down. And you just see. Look at. See what you want to look at. So I saw this bowl in the shop and it had this beautiful toucan. You know the toucan birds with the long nose and their many, many colors, black and that beautiful blue and the red and the yellow? Woo, those things are beautiful. And the long beak, and it was inside this ball. I said, I'd like to have one of those on my table. I, I, I'd like to have walls in my house one day. I have to buy the house because, you know, you, you can't do this in a rented house. Praise the Lord. Some things you, you, you suffer too much when you're in a rented house. Lift your hands for ownership. Own the damn thing. Own it. Sorry to talk so rough like that, but I mean, I mean it. Own the damn prop. Own it! Yeah, it was damn thing when it was in someone else's hand. And how are you saying Kenya? It's damn expensive, you know? People say, yeah, it's damn. You have this thing, oh, it's expensive. It's damn expensive. That's the way you like to say it. Kenyan language. Yeah, it was. It was all a mess when it was in someone else's hands. But when you own it, praise the Lord. And now it's yours, it becomes a blessed, beautiful thing. So rename it. It's a blessed property. It's a blessed house. It's a wonderful thing. It's my house. It's my property. And I can design it any way I want, bless God. And nobody can tell me otherwise. So you need to own a house. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands and let, let, let's click. You need to own it, even if it's, I don't know, you know, Take one level, then go to another level. But try to own something. Let me talk to the young people. Try to own something as quick as you can. Don't wait. It's a mistake. It's a wrong decision. No decision can also be a wrong decision. And I, I know, I know. Believe me, I know. One time someone was toying around with buying me, a, giving me, a, helping me. They had a burden for me to have a property. There was a time window on the thing. 
and I just didn't, I was busy, I was busy, and I just didn't go after it hard enough. I had another one like that. Did, I, I think they got conned in some deal. They were getting a bunch of properties in, in Europe somewhere, and they were going to give me one of them, you know, as a gift to the prophet, because they respected me so much. And then the, the whole thing went down. But I think it was good for a while. So maybe if I got off my busy schedule and dove into it a little bit more, I could have, like, wrestled that thing out of their hand. I didn't see it that I had to wrestle it. At the time, I was thinking, well, God can just give it to me. But you know what? You've got to stop thinking like that. Am I helping you? You've got to stop thinking, oh, God's just going to help me, and you leave everything to him. That's foolishness. He said to be diligent. He said occupy, take dominion. You've, have you seen all those in the Bible? Be diligent, number one. Mind, do your own business, Paul said. That's another one. Occupy until I come. Jesus said it. It's in the gospel. I think it's in Luke somewhere. And then, uh, and, and then take dominion. Have dominion. I made you to have dominion, to subdue everything on the earth. You have to do that. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It's laid up. It's up there. But how are you going to get it off the shelf and take it into your own possession? You have to do it by force. Another scripture, the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven permits that, that you be aggressive. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. Hosea 12, 13 said, by a prophet, the prophetic voice, the prophetic anointing, the people that were in bondage were led out of the place of bondage into a great new place. They were led and they were preserved and they were covered and they were touched and they were, they were cared for. And they, were, they were blessed. They were enlightened. They prospered. Ezra 6.14, very powerful, says the, the elders prospered by the prophesying of the prophet. 2 Chronicles 20.20, 20, believe in the Lord your God, you'll be established. Second part of the verse, 2 Chronicles 20.20b 20, 20, Second part of the verse says, but believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. Amos 3, 7 says, surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he first reveal his secret to his servant, the prophet. A lion has roared in the city who will not fear. The Lord has spoken. Who then can but prophesy? I've said it before, but I'll repeat it. What, it, what, it, what that means is that God wants you to echo the voice. When the voice speaks, you can echo it and also tap the grace of that creative miracle that's happening. Whether it be for a nation, a society, a business, for you, situations, what, what you want to have. And God amazingly reaches out his hand to everyone to bless them. But many take his hand for a minute, but they let their fingers slip off. Or they're half crazy, so they, they're like the devil now. They came one way, flee seven ways. <laughs> Split personalities and all that. But I'll tell you what, God loves every one of you. <laughs> as, many, as many entities as you are, as one person, with many entities, or, or if there are, God loves all of them. He doesn't love the devil, but he loves you. With all your craziness. Ah. Uh, in my, I'm seeing it again. In my heart, I, I just want to see people so blessed and to prosper. But they have to be able to, you know, be, be, be steadfast, unmovable. You know the scripture says that? Be steadfast, unmovable. But a lot of people aren't. They're very, uh, they're very unsteady <laughs> and very movable. <laughs> so we, we want to find ourselves to be like God as much as possible. Just pray in the Holy Ghost over that. As much like God. He's an aggressive person. God, he's a spirit. He's God. He's aggressive. He's rich. He's well-meaning, well-seeing, well-knowing, all-knowing, all-seeing. Omniscient means he's present everywhere. I mean, I mean he can see everything. Science is the, from the mind. Conscience is the word that comes from that. Conscious conscience is the word that comes from that. Omniscient. All-seeing, all-knowing. He's omnipotent. All-powerful all the time. 24-7, 365, 100%. He's omnipresent. He could be everywhere at the same time. Imagine that. Phenomenal. And this is how powerful God is, but he wants us to be like that. So you have to have his mind 
working in you. You know, Paul said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5 says, everything that exalts itself, every high thing, every thought, every imagination that exalts itself against uh, Christ and his glory and his will, we got to cast it down. For the weapons, verse 3, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, for the weapons of our warfare are mighty. They're, they're not uh, man-made of flesh, of earth. They're mighty through God, in God, through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. They're spiritual in nature. Acts 1.8 talks about the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Deuteronomy 8.18, same word power there, power to get wealth, which is to make, manage, and multiply money. And God wants us to have all of that. So there's his love for us, and then there's our love for ourselves. Then there's the power, kabra si ko ochi kala sete. This is powerful. Wow, I'm seeing it. Then there's our agreement with him. And then there's our agreement within ourselves. Jesus said, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. I saw Satan fall as lightning. He's a divisive fella. <laughs> He's a divisive idiot. Praise the Lord. He causes division. You ever have someone that you thought was okay and then you realize after a while they're not okay? You know what the Kenyan word is for that, right? Kwenduuko. Or Tokahapa. Is that nicer? Bye bye. Kwaheri. And if there are many people in one, Kwaherini. Don't let the door hit you. Where the good Lord splits you. <laughs> and everybody screams in Bishop Jake's church. So you have to be able to cohabitate. My God, I feel the anointing. Lift your hands. The presence of God. Whew, just falling here right now. You, you have to. Wow. <laughs> you, you have to be in agreement with God. And then him with you and you with him. And then you with yourself. And then the third level is you have to find some people that can flow with you. But it starts with you. I think I'll talk in another session, next volume maybe, about the importance of people again. As far as the love thing goes. Because when you have proper care for others, great things happen for them. When you have proper care of people coming from them to you, great things happen for you. But we got to get this thing straightened out first. So first is the, the volume one was the absolute grace of the love of God. That yes, he wants us to love one another because he puts his love in us, but it all came from him. That's the first thing we need to understand. His love for us and the fact that he's for us, not against us. <laughs> if God be for you, who could be against you? No one. No weapon formed. Again, Romans chapter eight. Let's look for that. If God be for you, who could be against you? We're also more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Let's flip these scriptures on the screen. The one that says, if God be for you, who could be against you? No one. And then the other one. I like that, be steadfast and unmovable again. We'll find that. Let's put that up there right now. Steadfast and immovable. Unmovable, unshakable. Powerful. Ephesians 3.20, let's go to that, says he'll, he'll do above and beyond what we could ask or think. That's how, that's how much he loves us. And then Isaiah, next, Isaiah 54.17 says, no weapon, no weapon shall succeed against you. And this is a season of our success, not the devil's success. The devil and the people like him, whoa, they're going to fail big. And there's a wave of judgment coming again. The Lord spoke to me. A wave of judgment, cleaving out, rooting out, people being punished for the horrible things they've done. It's only God that can anesthetize your mind. You know, an anesthesiologist is the one that puts you to sleep. Your whole body goes numb before you have your surgery. Huh? So you don't feel nothing? But God can sometimes have to anesthetize you 
so you don't go crazy about thinking about all the adverse things that have come against your life. I know he's done it for me. He spoke to me a few things that are personal. I won't, I won't share them now. He told things to me just to encourage me. I don't need to say them to you right now. Just things he told me. But I, I had this experience, I think yesterday, somebody reminded me of something and I began to take inventory about a lot of things and I thought, oh my God, they did all that? More than I remembered, but I'm remembering it again because I did have it in my memory somewhere. But it's okay because when, you know, when you're strong enough and you're healed of it all, and you, you know, it's okay. Like you could think of it, it doesn't make you feel like you want to crumble or feel depressed, you know. <laughs> You're just like, well, God's going to fix their hide still. And he's going to give me back better than what I had. Lift your hands. When God gives it back, he always gives back more. And better. You have to know that. So no weapon formed against us can prosper. Oh, I have so many scriptures about God's care for us. Psalm 139, 16 and 17 before I get to this other part, uh, this other part of this topic that I want to cover. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when there was yet none of them. How precious also your thoughts are toward me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Psalm 139, 16 and 17. Matthew 10, 29 to 31, talks about the sparrows, they fall, but the Lord cares for them. They're, they're all numbered, the hairs of your head are numbered. And not one of them sparrows falls, except the Father knows about it. He said, don't fear, because you're more valuable than many sparrows. I hope so. <laughs> We're more valuable than sparrows. Matthew 10, 29 to 31. Romans 8, 28, I love the fact that God gave me an emphasis of revelation to teach about this because a lot of people use the scripture for adversity when really the scripture clearly says all things work together for good. For good, not for bad. Praise the Lord. No matter what happens, God, God's plan for you is good. 100%. We're his. Someone said, is Jesus coming? Yeah, he's coming. And what about the tribulation? I said, I don't know about that. I'm not going to be here. When the trumpet blows, I'm leaving. Until then, I'm blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the trumpet blows, I'm going up. If I have loose shoes on, I have the microphone, I'm in the front, God will take me first. And if I drop the mic, mic drop. Hope the mic doesn't hit you because you'll be down there. You'll be following me up. I hope so. I hope you're coming up with me because I'm going. I hope my shoes don't fall off and hit you in the head on the way up. But it's okay. You'll, you'll, you just, you'd be like George Bush. Remember when he did that? When the guy in Iraq threw his shoes at him? And he just missed. The second one was close. The first one, President Bush went, you know? The second one, he kind of just, he was shocked. And like he went, woo, right over his head. Thank God the shoe didn't hit him in the face. And you know, they beat that guy to oblivion. That guy... That guy, that guy was stupid. The, even the Iraqi government beat him. They tortured him. They beat him. They broke his bones. They beat that guy senseless. And uh, anyway, he, he was passionate. At least he was passionate. <laughs> he didn't like the war. Who likes war? Praise the Lord. President Trump, thank God, has the philosophy of pulling out of everywhere, not going into everywhere. People thought, you see these people screaming when he hit that guy? And what did Iran actually do now? They actually backed up because they're scared. Because they they they've seen a man that's serious. They've seen a man that's not going to work with them and placate them like Obama did. He's going to say, hey, you, don't fool with us. Don't fool with me. I'm the wrong guy. We're the wrong people. And they said, we have 52 targets already there. The Royal, the RAF, or the RA, whatever, Royal Navy of Britain, whatever they call them. The RAF, I think, is the, their military uh, bases. They're saying now, because of this uh, virus in China, 
The people that Brits that are in China, when they come back, they can't fly into Heathrow or Gatwick or wherever. Or uh, what's that other little airport? Stansted. I used to fly out of there. And they can't uh, go to Paris. I'd fly from Stansted. They had a uh, quicker route, a little bit of, a bit of a drive. Gatwick is really far. You've got to drive all the way down to the southwest of London. Uh, Heathrow is in the middle, but also it's a little bit out there. Traffic and traffic, oh, you have to just give yourself two hours just to make sure you get there on time. But just, just when you're leaving where you're coming from. Brutal. And it's always raining there. Huh. Anyway, uh, you can't fly into the airports now. You got, they say you got to go to the military base and quarantine for a week or two to make sure they see that you don't have the virus before they let you back into the society in Britain. And let me tell you, I, I wasn't going to say it per se, but uh, now that I'm on it, let me say it. This thing in China, the Lord showed me something the other day when I heard about it. I was standing in the bank and I was watching the TV, uh, the 3 o'clock news. What do you call it? KTN or something, the English one, you know, the guy talking, nice, nice, nice newscast. And they just share what's going on in the world. I, I saw Brexit happening. Now the impeachment is going to be also dropped against the President Trump. That's going to happen. They talked about that. And they talked about uh, this China thing. And they had some statistics up on the screen. And they said that China's transportation now has fallen up to 45%. Even inside China, the trains, the planes, transportation movement in China has come to a halt. And they say their, their growth has gone down to almost zero. And it's probably going to go dip below that. It's going go, to go negative. And you know what the Lord told me? This is the reason for this happening. He said to me, it's like a plague of Egypt because they've come against Christianity. And then they, somebody told me, I haven't done enough research on this, I haven't had time, but I'd like some more input on this. But let me say, it's alleged, it's reported and told to me by reliable sources, but I still want to read up on it more, that they passed the law, they just outlawed religions in China. And they've tightened it up even more on Christianity. This is like putting the children of Israel, like the Egyptians put them in bondage, and God sent Moses to tell them, hey, let, let, let us go. Stop this. And, and he hardened his heart and made it worse. And the Lord sent 10 plagues. Now the locusts, they say in 70 years, this locust plague that just happened when all the rain is going on. Usually locusts are like desert kind of things, right? They fly in the wind in the dry places. Now they come into the wet places, the flooded places even. And they're eating everything. And I thought, this is, this is, a, this is a reaction. This is, this is not just a, 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 a coincidental occurrence. Something's up. Because the, le the, the levels of wickedness here, I mean, it's just too much. And God's combating that. So I wrote a, a little article this week, and I said, I think that these calamities will lead to people getting saved. Because when you squeeze them so hard, they can't just take comfort in the way that everything's so okay for them. They need an answer. They need God then. They need Jesus then. Hello. And they'd be more apt because of their suffering to say, let me try this anyway. That if I don't, you know, I didn't, I want to go to church or uh, this religious stuff. But man, when you're hurting, praise the Lord. When you go into an inner city and people are in poverty, messed up, drugged, abused, beaten, whacked out, messed up life. And you tell them, hey, Jesus can help you. Wow. They'll take your hand and say, please, please, yeah, please, I need something. And they, but now they found the right source and God honors that. And they end up getting saved. So these plagues in the world should lead to people's salvation. And we're praying for that. Amen. But can you imagine one outbreak, about 300 people already dying, and it's becoming like this, this, this byword of the world. All of a sudden, just out of nowhere. And, and it's, not, it's not for nothing. It's a reaction. It's a plague coming. 
because of their stance against Christianity. The other religions, I don't know and don't, I don't care, you know? You know how you say in Nairobi, me, I don't know, me, I don't care. Praise the Lord. Whatever, whatever. Talk to the hand, girlfriend. The faint say trying to hear it. Me, I, me, myself, I. Me, I, don't know about all that because it's all false anyway. Praise the Lord. But Jesus is Lord. Let's lift our hands and worship him. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And the time when they'll want to be drawn, they'll be more open to hear the message and think when they need help with some calamity that's going on. So you have to see good in the bad. Still God's love is at work. Did God create a virus? No, the devil did. <laughs> did God... I, I don't know. Does God, like, take pleasure in a uh, whole country's economy getting messed up and people dying? Of course not. But you people are wicked. You've you got to stop what you're doing. This is a reaction. You invoked it. You know, the amazing thing is that when people get caught in their crimes and then they think, well, uh, oh, you know, like, they, someone should feel sorry for them. You idiot. You did it. You pay for it. You didn't have to do that. Well, it's too hard. Like the guy that shot someone, and then he wants to cry about how is he going to pay the bail money. And because he's a privileged guy, you know, this guy, he thinks they can make a payment schedule for bail. Who does that? Pay or, get, pay or stay in. If it's this much, you got to come up with the money if you want to walk out the door. And they're making, like, a payment arrangement with the guy. What is he going to do, buy M Pesa? No, that, that number's too big, I'm joking. Lift your hands, praise the Lord. Yeah, I'll pay by M Pesa. Yeah, pay bill. What's the pay bill number? What? 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 What's the buy goods? What's the till number? Are you kidding me? I saw this parody in Kenya. It said, just the privilege of the rich. Just buy a judge. <laughs> buy you one. You got enough cash. You have a problem. Just buy him. And they showed this, I have, the, I have it somewhere, I, I can't really show it on the screen because it's a bit bad. I, I really can't, this one, I'm not reposting that, but I have it in my own file. There's things I, I see and I repost, there's things that are a little bit too raised, a little bit too much, you know? A little bit too, a little bit too provocative. But as, as this guy, like he's laying in a bathtub with a woman there and they're having like a champagne or something, and here's a judge, you know, with his white thing on his head, you know, the things they wear on the head, and he's dressed in like a tutu, you know, like a, like a nanny's outfit or something. And he's pouring their, you know, thing and giving them, you know, some grapes or something. I thought, this is, these people are sick. Who came up with this? I laughed. I laughed so hard. I thought, oh, my God. And it, the thing was like, yeah, just buy a judge. A privilege of the rich. <laughs> so then it's still good to be rich and not poor. Because the poor man, what happens to the poor man? A poor man gets a gun and shoots someone? Whoo! That's the end of him, right? Gonna get out? When? When? And then everybody would be against the guy because he doesn't have any money to pay anybody. Lift your hands and say, thank God. You, you know, in this world, you need money. You need money. Not for that, I hope. Not for that, I pray. Never for that, but for something. Something. Money answers all things. Ecclesiastes 10.19 says. Money answers all things. You gotta have money. Gives you more options. And it's the will of God to give you more, you to have more. Not to do bad with, but to do good with. How many want to do good for somebody? You want to do something good for somebody in your life? Oh, yes, I do. So much. You have to have the ways to do it. So we are a royal priesthood. Let me read this scripture. 1 Peter 2.9. Then I'm going to get into the other thing. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. There it is, a royal priesthood. We are elect of God. We're his royalty. And he called us out of the darkness into his light. I love it. Marvelous light. His marvelous light. Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. He chose us before the foundations of the world. That speaks for itself, doesn't it? Think about it. And read the rest of it, too. It's very good according to the good pleasure of his will. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world, and I want to skip right to the end, according to the good pleasure of his will. Read the in-between part yourself. Ephesians 1, 
verses 4 and 5. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Oh, yes. And there's more there. You can read it. 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, he desi that he desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Men and women, meaning mankind, human people. All of them to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4. You're reading that now. Read it. 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. His divine power gives us everything. I'm paraphrasing. I'm reading another version here, but I'm paraphrasing even from that one. He gives us everything that is for, for our life, for godliness, to do good things. Godliness is doing good things. God, good, good, God, godly, godliness, God, him, God, me. Hello? This is good preaching. God, him, God, me, godly. That's us. He's giving us all. He said he's already given them, but of course now he's giving them to us. All things by his great and precious promises. Wow. That we also be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world. The corruption that's in the world. We've escaped it. Wow. Psalm 94, verse 14, the Lord will not cast off his people, he won't, and he will not forsake his own inheritance, he will not. I talked about that last week. The covenant is unshakable and unbreakable. That was in volume one, now we're in volume two, here we go, the love of God. This is also going to become a book. Woo, I'm excited. If you obey my voice, Exodus 19, 15. Keep my covenant, then you'll be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Exodus 19, verse 15. If all the earth belongs to God, and he wants to share it with us, then how blessed are we? How rich are we? The answer is very and very. Joshua 1 9, be strong and of good courage, precious one, and do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Don't do that, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. The Lord is the one who goes before you, and he will be with you, and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So do not fear. Do not be dismayed. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Paul said in Romans 8, 38, I'm persuaded that nothing can separate me. You know that one. From him. There's more, there's more, but I'm going to skip from that. Let me just, uh, wow, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's so many more. Let me, I got to jump to the other thing. So I didn't give you all I had. No great preacher can give you everything he has. We'd never, we'd never turn the machine off. Praise the Lord. We'd be here till, we'd be here till next week still talking. All right. I want to speak to you in the realm of self-care and self-love and transition with just a few principles just to enlighten you on how valuable you really are how whole you're supposed to be, how powerful you're supposed to be, how awesome you're supposed to be in your thinking, in your ways, and in manifestation. So a, a few ways to improve your self-confidence. Very important, this thing, confidence. God confidence, but then self-confidence. Self-esteem, your self-esteem, how you feel about yourself. Again, one plus one equals one. One plus minus one equals zero. <laughs> or point one or point two, right? Hello, you can't perform a lot if you don't, you're not thinking correctly. How many are blessed by what I said about the business thing? The business world is yours. Let me prophesy again. The business world is for you. Don't be afraid. So I told this person, I said, hey, this friend of mine, I said, look, get all the contact information, make sure you have all the info there, 
unless you're just happy making your salary for however long. And they're not a very young person. You know, they're not in their 20s or anything, or 30s even. So, uh, I mean, figure it out. Build your own enterprise. Go for it. Even if you had all your overhead and expenses and you still made a few hundred thousand a month, is that okay? Hello? Is that okay? Is that better than what you're making now, being a slave to these people 12 hours a day? Hello? 10 to 12 hours a day. Your, all your energy goes into working for them. They're making the money and they're just paying you some pittance. Praise the Lord. That's not okay. So if you had your own thing, even if you had to work a battle a little bit harder and work the thing, but you know, you, you pay all this stuff and you run it and you still end up with a lot more. So I said to them, I said, if you were making 20 times what you're making now, would that be okay? Their eyes lit up and went, oh, I'm listening. Yes, I will. Yes. If you were making 10 times more, 20 times more than what you're making now, would that be good? Oh, yes. It would be great. But it's only possible if you're doing your own business. Because ain't nobody going to pay you that salary. Unless you're at the topest level of a certain thing. And then, you know, then it's a lot of warfare, especially around here. I have a friend. He's a general manager of an organization. You, I can't tell you the devils that are fighting. The accountant is stealing money. I just visited there and the power of God hit the place. I didn't pray. I wasn't preaching. I wasn't ministering. I wasn't counseling. Nothing. I was sitting there eating chicken and salad and drinking the juice that they made, the tropical juice. And walking on the beach and all that and doing that and enjoying the place. Wasn't even feeling like I'm there to like, you know, let's have a meeting and let's pray. Oh, you know, hallelujah. You know, I wasn't doing that. I'm drinking cappuccino, drinking juice, having some salad and just sitting there enjoying the cool breeze. And the presence of God hit the whole place. Next thing you know, the accountant got exposed. Then they're telling me about this guy that's going behind his back to the boss because he's jealous of him. People are a bunch of idiots. Lift your hands. Some, some friend, a partner of the ministry, wrote me messages the last two days about the funeral of their relative. The foolishness that's going on. All the family members fighting about how the program's going to go. Some is in another cult, you know, the JW or whatever. And then they, then they want to they wanna fight each other. I'm like, Jesus, man, you could write a script for hell. Let's make a Netflix movie. I'll pray it goes through. And maybe everybody can watch it and send me the tithes. Jesus in heaven. What is this? So I have to just sit there, roll my eyes. Even 2 o'clock in the morning, they're sending me messages. I'm reading them right back. It's okay. Smiley face. Pray, praying hands. I'm praying, I'm praying. And then finally, after they write the last thing, I just have to say, you know, you'll make it. Just get through it. <laughs> just get through it. You'll be all right. These people are absolutely belligerently insane. Lift your hands. When you have that going on in the society, so many devils. I, I, I can tell you this. I've had people come to, 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 to be with us. And, and next thing you know, you look at them. They're just they're, they're unstable. They do all kinds of What's up? It's worse than that. I don't want to tell any gory details. I'm preaching about the love of God here. I want to be real positive. But my God. But again, principle, I'm okay, I'm okay, he's okay, he's okay. One finger, woo, two fingers, woo, let's put them together. <whistles> What's that thing? Here's the church. You know, the kids sing the song. Here's the church and the steeple, and then and here's all the, all the people. You do like this. You know, that's a funny thing, the kid's song. You know that kid's song? Something about the church, put your hands together. Here, and then here's the church and the steeple, and then inside is all the people. There they are. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So that's like that. I'm okay. I'm okay. He's okay. He's okay. Woo! I connect with myself. Okay. Sour, sour. Nico, sour. Praise the Lord. And then they connect him to him. Woo! And then put the fingers together. This deep. I never, this is powerful. Oh my God, I'm having a good time. Look at that. You go like this. Woo! Now we're all together. <laughs> then whoever's like nuts, it's okay. Nico Sawa. Sawa Sawa. That means okay, okay in Swahili. Anybody watching in another land, you want to 
What language is that? What are you doing? And in Swahili, we say, see you next Sunday. This is volume two. I'll do, I'll do another set. But, you know, I never know what I'm going to preach till the Lord tells me, because that's one great thing about this ministry. I, tell, I, I speak what God gives me to say. If he changes it like he did, he just brought another series about the love of God, just came supernaturally. It's like that. But I want to continue in this, because I think there's a lot of things here to talk about. I, I want to. Let's see what he's going to do. But So next Sunday, you say, tu, Tuolani Jumapili Ijayo. That means see you next Sunday. That's Swahili for see you next Sunday. Come. Bring a friend. Praise the Lord. Some keys to increasing your well-being, your self-confidence, your self-image your self and your self-esteem. And I'm going to pray. Here we go. Wake up in the morning and start to be positive from your first thoughts when you wake up. I, I can call that wake up happy. Wake up singing to your favorite music. Spend company with a, uh, an optimistic friend or family or person. Read inspirational messages. All these things you can do. Positive way to start your day is to start early, but wake up happy. Make yourself happy. Praise the Lord. I love it when I have good dreams. Like I've been having good dreams. Really good. Like a powerful things happen in my dreams. Oh, my. I even saw some inventions and stuff and new technologies. I don't even know. I have to, God has to bring that back around to me again. I'm just like so powerful. I'm so powerful in that realm of sleep, in the subconscious mind and in the spirit. I'm just, I love it when it's like that because that, that's when you've done this, okay? You see what I did? Me and me, we're okay. God, and, God is okay. Beautiful, wonderful, and we're all together. So now my whole being is like that. And then when also when you excommunicate the crazy people, wow, things change. When wrong people leave your life, good things begin to happen. That's why the bishop said, just let them go. Let them go, let them go, let my people go. You have to care about yourself, say, let me go. So there's these features in technology called block, 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 delete, block, 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 everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, SMS, WhatsApp, woo, telephone, email, <laughs> all your numbers, all your things, all the ways, block, 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 no noise, can't hear it. Then you're like, wow, I'm free. <sighs> me and me. Him and him, me and him. You get it? Isn't it amazing that you could just ex you could just surgically remove negativity from toxicity and negativity from your life? Isn't it just wonderful that you can do that? You know, in the old days, people had your 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 landline number. You know, the home phone. They could just ring your phone off the hook and drive you crazy. Now the technology came. There's even a thing in America called. Robocall, to kill robo, robocall killer. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't sign up for that yet. I was too busy, but I, I would if I had to. But, but we use cell phones now, you know? The cell phone, too, if you don't like something after a minute, just shut the thing, lock it. But the robocall killer is these companies that get people's numbers and they call. There's one area code that was calling a certain area code, because I have a, a phone in that area code. And my God, every Jack would call you, Jack and Jill would call you for e pitching everything, and you answer because you see a number and you don't know who it is. My God, I just started to see, whenever I see that area code, I wish there was a feature, probably if I explored it enough, there's a feature that I could block any incoming number from that area code, that it never rings on my end. There's probably a way to do that, but I didn't have to go that far. Uh, just knew not to answer. Keep your ringer on silent as much as you can so you don't get disturbed. If, you know, if you're, if you're expecting a lot of traffic on a call and you're in a conversation and someone's writing you, keep it on. You hear ding, 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 ring dong, ding dong, whatever your ringtone is. I have a ringtone on my phone, my main phone that I answer, and it's a, it's a man of God speaking a blessing over me, giving me some, some counsel about how to do certain things, powerful marketing and stuff like that, and some ideas. So I made him my ringtone. So when my phone rings, I hear his voice talking to me, telling me good things. I want, to hear, I want to listen to that all the time. So several times a day, I hear that. I don't need to hear a tone, and I don't need to have no jingas on the phones making noise. 
You know, when you call, you're like, ah, ah, ah. it's like, Jesus, why? Turn that off. I tell people, if you work for me, turn that off. Unsubscribe to that. I didn't call to hear that. You hit the phone, it's like, ah, ah, ah. like, are you kidding me? Just let the phone ring, please, and answer it. Or put on some motivation. I love the ones that have the word. Yeah, what's that one? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I like that one. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's a, and it has a little flute in the background. That's a nice one. The word is always appropriate. There's a, there's a, a guy in the Philippines who just instituted a new thing where he said, it's mandatory for people to like read the Bible in their schools, in their system or whatever. So I wrote a comment on the top. I said, the Holy Bible will never hurt anyone now. But I had to really think it through because some people could want to argue with that. Didn't people die in the name of religions? Yeah, when you had evil popes back in the 1400s or before that, the 1100s, 1200s, whatever, they were tyrannical devils, many of them, and they were using like the scripture and then even the colonization that happened from the British Empire. They would come with scripture to, to subdue and quote the scripture like servants obey your masters. You know, they use these out of context. So there was a time when the word was misused and it did hurt people. But these days, it's not like that. Hello. People don't even hardly listen to anything like that anymore like they used to. They don't take it like that. They don't, don't use it like that. If you're reading the Bible, you're going to get something good out of it now. So I wrote the word now because I really thought it through the statement before I make a statement. Before I make a statement, I want to be absolutely sure that I'm saying the right thing, and I'm really, I can prove it. I know what I'm saying. It's absolute truth. It's true, factual, but also truth. So we need to get more on the word. Lift your hands. Lord, let this be a year of the Holy Bible as the year of success. Let this be a year, my God, where we get in the word and in prayer and know the word and exercise our faith and flow with the gift of faith and get out more in the realm of aggressive action and entrepreneurship, even in the ministry, for marketing, mass marketing, mass producing the word out there, out there, out there, out there, the people all over the planet to be blessed. And that is a part of our mission. I wrote a vision statement, and the vision statement was this. Someone said, what's your vision? I'll tell you. To reach as many people as possible with the word of the Lord through every means of communication in the shortest amount of time possible. Full stop. That's the vision. That's what I'm about. That's what I want to do. So if you're with us, you should be thinking about that. Wake up happy. Happy. Po Number two, positive self-talk. These are ways to improve your self-confidence, your self-esteem, and your self-image. Your self-confidence, your self-esteem, and your self-image. And my God, God wants you to have that. Positive self-talk. It speaks for itself. Say, I'm going to have a great and productive day. I'm going to have God's favor. I'm going to be blessed. Everything's going to work well, and on and on. Keep doing it. Encouraging words. We need to speak encouraging words to people, but also to ourselves. And, and also have people to speak encouragement to us, because it's like food. It's like nourishment. All these things I was talking about, like the avocados, and the chia seeds, and the bananas, and the watermelons, and the vegetables, and the good... Uh, game animals and what? Great. Oh, I didn't tell you. I was on Waiaki Way. I started to say I was coming from the, the, the health food shop. And I saw a whole uh, a big truck, open back truck full of pigs. <laughs> so now I've seen it all. I've seen chickens. I've seen everything. I've seen cows. I've seen... Now there's a whole, a whole truck full of pigs. I said, Ben, I'm glad my windows are closed and I'm not behind it. And I have the vent closed on the AC, you know, that the out, air from the outside can't come in. Thank God. Big truck full of big fat pigs, hogs. They were there. I was like, oh, glory. Where am I at? Lift your head. <laughs> Woo, encouraging words. Next. Finding the positive. Always emphasize in every situation the lesson, lessons or bless. I was going to say blessings. That's why I said it like that. The lessons or blessings that you can extract from every situation. Find the positive in it. Find the positive in everything. Be empathetic. Let other people be empathetic to you. 
Encourage. Encouragement is powerful. Enthusiasm is another powerful word. Enthusiasm comes from enth entheos, which means in God. Optimism. Seeing an opportunity in every problem. Good words. Wow. Focus in the presence of God. Focus also in the present of where you are, the present for, the, for a good future. The past is lessons to learn from, but you don't need to dwell on them. Forget past failures. Write that down. I'm forgetting past failures. I'm forgetting them. Forgetting. Don't remind yourself. Also, on your dream wall of your life, in your phone, like in your note, we, we, places where you put notes, uh, your, your gallery of things you look at, what you have, books that you read or magazines you read or um, images that you see. Let it all be things that encourage you of something positive to come. And also never, this is the love of God I'm talking here now, never, and love for yourself, self-care, you, self-love, you never let anyone speak anything negative. You know, someone comes up and says, so well, this bad thing could happen. I say, no, it won't. Every single time I've done it for years, every single time. I never let a word go unchecked if I don't like the word. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you said. I don't care where I am. And I don't care who's listening. One, two, three, four. I don't care who you are, number one. I don't care what you said, number two. I don't care where I am, number three. And I don't care who's listening. Don't care. Me, I. Don't care. I never let a word I don't like go and check. You say, well, this is bad. Not for me. Well, this could have to happen to them. It's not going to happen to me. Some friends of mine were killed in plane crashes. So what am I supposed to say? I can't, I can't come to terms with Miles Monroe's death, Ed Dufresne's death by plane. And the other guy just got killed, not a celebrity in the world. I don't follow that sport, so I don't, I'm sorry to say I don't. I'm just not. I didn't feel all that moved about it like so many people are. I didn't feel, I didn't feel it. Didn't feel it. Don't feel it. It's not in my world. I'm not interested in that. You know. Thank God they're successful. Someone said they went to church, got confessed the Lord before they that happened. I don't know why it happened, but I'm you know, I'm not in that. But Miles Monroe was my personal friend and a great apostle of God in the kingdom. Ed Dufresne, D U F. R-E-S-N-E, -E. it's like a, he's Louisiana, like a Cajun, like a French spell word. He was killed in a plane crash. His, his plane exploded when he was coming back from preaching. 71 years old. He wasn't young, but he had a long round. Through. I don't know why that happened. I don't know what happened. But the only thing I could say to reckon with all that, it's not going to happen to me. I have three friends, three personal friends, who are all three of them are great men of God. All three of them are great men of God. Just had open heart surgery, triple bypass. The veins were clogged, arteries were clogged, have a heart, have a heart attack. And then they had to get the, the, break your bones and rip your rib cage open. And man, that's devastating to somebody. They got to sew you up and you have all these, li this long line down you. You can't move, your muscles are all pulled out of place. Takes a, they said it takes about four months before you're even half normal after that. The only thing I could say is it's not going to happen to me. Lift your hands. So this week, I want to do something about it. I need to do more about it. This week, I went to take some tests. Expensive, but I said, I got to do what I can. I took the echo heart test. I took the EKG test. They said, perfect. I thought, yeah, it's Jesus again. I took all the litany of blood tests, 14 of them. Cost 50000 what am I going to do? Got to take care of myself. This is in the message. Self-care. Got to live a long time. The doctor we leaned forward behind his desk. He said, he said, Doctor, you're a very healthy man. He said, Dr. Thomas, you're a very healthy man. And I just shouted, it's Jesus. <laughs> and he just, like the, it's, like the, it's like the power of God hit him. He went like jolted like that back in his chair. I said, thank God. He said, everything's, everything's normal except for maybe one thing that I need to regulate a bit. But everything else is good. Finally, I took an HIV test. Finally in my life. 
Never did, never did want to. Who, who wants to take that test? The insurance company said they wanted it and said, ah, go for it. Spin the wheel, you know, joke. Roulette wheel, you know, is it red, seven on red, black on 12. Let's see where the ball's gonna fall off. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Spin, spin the chamber. Russian roulette. I mean, I, I, don't have, I don't have anything to worry about, but of course, everything came out negative. I don't have none of it. Lift your hands, praise the Lord. Is that good to know? Thank you, Jesus. None of it. All the systems in the body are good. But, but then there's this other test that they want to do. It's even, it costs a bit, but it's, it's the only way we can see the actual arteries that go to the heart is to take a CT scan. I need to do that next and see what's going on. Because also the artery built, the arterial sclerosis, they call it, the plaque buildup in the arteries. It's, they say, I don't think, I, don't, I hope it's not impossible to get rid of. I hope not. If you do have any, maybe there's a way to attack it through nutritional means. Praise the Lord. But I just believe God, and I'm not having none of that open heart surgery. I'm not having, lift your hands, I'm not having, I declare it in advance. It's not going to happen. I don't know what happens to people, even great men of God. I don't understand it. It's a mystery. We can't come to terms with some of these things. Why bad things happen to good people that are shaking the world, touching the world, and then they have this a calamity happen to them. The only thing I can say is it's not going to happen to me. So this is positive self-talk. This is the power of good words. And you need to never say anything out of your mouth that you don't want to manifest. Don't say anything that you wouldn't sign a contract or document to say, I want to see this manifested. Don't say it, because when you say it, you're giving it license to happen. And I've done that, I've done that all, I've done that all my Christian life. I've done, you, you have to do that, continuously. Don't just say something bad could happen, not to me. Speak for yourself. How rude to try to speak something on someone else. Get out of here with that. I chase the word. I rebuke it. You came one way, flee seven ways. Ain't happening here. There's a law here. I'm blessed. I'm healthy. I'm healed. I'm rich. I'm protected. I'm secured. There's no accident, calamity, problem, sickness, disease, failure, brokenness, poorness, devastation. Nothing can happen like that for me. No evil can penetrate us. No, no devil can do anything against us. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Cannot. That's the way it is. Woo, there's so many more. I'm also not done. I'm going to save some for later. Lift your hands. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Self-talk. I want to close that. I have, about, I have about 12 more points here in the notes, but I'm, I'm not going to do it now. I think that's the greatest place to drop this volume to, and we pick it up next time. I think it's the greatest place. The, the words that we speak. The power of our words. The power of the spoken word. The power of our faith in action. Just wherever you are right now. And sh everybody, share this message. Hit the share button. People need to hear this. I've, my God, this is amazing how the Lord is. Brought so much out here today. And every time we come together. Thank you, Jesus. The full production video of this will be available in a, in a, in, in a short time. And uh, all the other messages also are available. You'll be able to partake of those. And, we, and please do share them. You know, some people don't understand that there's a seed you can sow by sharing something good for, that'll help somebody. That's a seed that God will bless you for. So do it. Now today is 2022020. Never gonna happen again in our generation or any other. They said for like 900 years it won't happen again. 700 years, 900 years, whatever it was. I was reading. I posted it on my Facebook page, on facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. Scroll down, you'll find it. You'll see the 20-02-20-2020, like an icon thing. Click it and read it. They said it won't happen for many, many 700 or 900 years or whatever it is. So it's a right now thing. And people are starting to see the benefit of doing a first fruit 
And I, I want to challenge everyone. If you're in America, it would be 202 or 2020. <laughs> That's $2,000. I don't know if you can do that. But let's say $200. I really feel a witness about that. 202. 202, yeah. 202. In honor of this season that we're in right now. You can send that by PayPal, Cash App. In, in Kenya, I guess that would be what? That would be 20,000, wouldn't it? 20,000 or 20... 20... Oh, 20. Oh. Okay. If someone's in the big leagues, I, I, I don't know who I'd be talking to, but somebody, 200,000 and, and do the math yourself. But I'd like everyone here to at least to a 2,020, which is in shillings. If you could do that in dollars, euros, pounds, you're welcome. But you can make it in the 100 realm, 202 euros, pounds, dollars. But as an entrance point in Kenya, you could do by M-Pesa, uh, send a seed. You can do it as... Uh, 2020, all right, to honor the year and the date. There's something combustive about this season. If God says this is the time when he's going to make people successful and rich, you better get involved in sowing right now. The Lord also gave me a strategy to plant something into something that is uh, going to help us in creative brilliance in the ministry. Uh, and it's not here, and it's not in Africa, it's in another continent, but the Lord... The Lord spoke to me about it. I'm doing that, and it's, it's amazing. It's a time to get very creative and very aggressive about your giving. Giving is what produces wealth. Sharing what you have. Take, but also, even in a very self-caring way, as I've been talking about, you know, take care of yourself. To say, I'm doing this transaction for me. I don't know if I care about everybody else so much, you know. Just be honest. I told you about the woman in New York years ago that said, she really shocked me. We were going to a revival meeting. She says, I don't care about all that. I just want to get blessed. <laughs> Christian lady, she said, I don't care about no revival. I don't care about people. I don't care about all that. I just want to get blessed. So she said, she's really being a little bit selfish there and saying, I just, I just want to get blessed. At least she was honest. Funny story. So you could say, I'm doing this as a transaction for me. I want everybody, I want to challenge everybody to do this. Everybody, everybody. If you, if you don't have that to do that right now, you can do it in pieces. Also, I'm shocked to see people that receive but never plant anything. How, do you, how, do, how are you in a ministry and you give nothing? Zero. You receive but you don't give. How? Well, I have another church. Well, flip on your other church. You're here. You're here. What do we, we don't care about your other church. Why should we care about that? We have a mission to fulfill ourselves. If your heart is here, your treasure is here also. Hello. Hello. I had a guy one time also, another guy that I helped. He didn't plant nothing back. He's broke. He's impoverished. His house gets locked. His school fees of his kids, he can never pay them. And I helped him again. Maybe blessed me. He comes with his story. Then after him, it's so Carotid, carotidize, carotidize, yeah, I'm saying it right. The, you know when, they, when you have a wound and they need to seal the wound, they'll take like a hot thing and seal it, you know, with heat? Like when you're welding something, you know? You know what I mean? When you want to weld it, you have to take the heat and you seal it off. It like melts the steel or the metal and seals it. Carotidize, like if you cut an artery, they might have to carotidize the artery, meaning like by force, not just sew it, but burn it, melt it together so it sticks together. Hello? That's so carotid carotidized, if I'm saying right. My thinking uh, after that experience, I said, no more, no more, no more. I can't do it. Unless God tells me now, whatever God tells me, I'll do anything He tells me. And then another guy comes, here's the story. We're doing some business together, he's doing something. That is to his kid's school fees, and he's going crazy asking me for all these thousands. I said, no. I asked somebody else who knows him. He said, he told me, no. 
Don't do it. Just tell him you're not doing it. I said, I did already. I can't. Imagine. Well, it's good to be able to help people, but people also, also need to reciprocate. So the gentleman had a little talk with the other gentleman, and then he was very sober and clear next time on a professional level. What he's doing for me in this realm of business, that's what he's doing. We don't discuss other things. So, you know, it gets to the point where I, don't, I can't ask him again, how's your kids doing and all that. Oh, God, I'm opening up like the gates of, <laughs> I'm opening up the gates of Armageddon. Praise the Lord, lift your hands. No, 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 we got to keep that door closed right now because we have, we have limited time. We're doing something. You're doing something for me. I'm paying you for that. Let's leave. All right? And then find it in your heart, your, in your way to give something into what we're doing also. I feel the presence of God right now. It's a time to sow. This is going to be a big year. Trust me. A big year. God has spoken. So many things are coming through the pipeline. The big things you're believing for. And we have great givers. We have people that give. We have people that give. In our ministry, we have people that give. They really do. I commend you. Bravo. I commend you for what you've done. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you for being faithful. God's blessing you for that. But I want to challenge everyone. This message is also going out to many other people. A 2020 seed. You can do it by M-Pesa. But the M-Pesa number in Kenya is 792 3207800792320780 and it be on the screen there you can sew that way in America do by PayPal paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton that's all you need it'll take you right to our portal page and of course the website has all of this www.thomasmanton.com you can do that there and the reason I'm saying all this, because the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. I, you know, one thing, you, you know, I'm, I'm a trusted man in the prophetic. You can trust my voice to have integrity. I don't play games with this thing. When God shows me something or tells me, I'm going to tell you, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Praise the Lord. How many appreciate that? I'm going to tell you nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. I'm going to tell you exactly what he said. He showed me this. He said, tell everyone today to sow this in honor of this 202020 thing. 0220020. You know, the 02 and the 20. Praise the Lord. Well, however variation you want to do that. Now, if you're tithing, that's a separate issue. With tithe, you pay, you don't give. It's a giving heart that makes you want to tithe. But that's your, that's your insurance money for the kingdom. That's your... It's your fee for being blessed by God. God only asks for 10%. So that's not an offering. But outside of that, there's first fruits and then there's offerings. And there's missions, things for the poor, which we're also doing, have done, and going to do so much more. Oh, I'm telling you, we haven't even, we haven't even scratched the surface of what we're going to do and all that. And I'm very excited about that. I look at people and I love them. I was, I was getting a coffee on the way here. I was just getting a, a cappuccino on the way here, and uh, I saw these babies running around, and this little girl walked past, and she just looked so, I can't explain the love of God that gets in you for people, an assignment for people, Kenyan baby, I just, I just love them, I just, I can't explain it, it's, it's a supernatural, and they love me too, they all look at me, even the Somalis, Somali family walking out. Two kids walked by and one went, oh, hey, he looked at me like that. I said, hey, back, hey. They're all looking at They're looking like, hey, look at that. What is it about? What? It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. And the little girl went looking at the, in the glass counter where all the cakes were, and I almost cried. I did. I almost cried. I thought... Baby, if, if I was, in, if I was in, the, in the equation of this uh, thing here today, you can have anything you want. You pick anything you want in there. I'll buy it right now. But of course I can't because uh, I'm rushing here to the meeting. Then they, they got their family and then there's a kid. You know, you, you know what I mean? You can't. Unless you'd have to go to the table, say hi to everyone, say can I. And then they'd feel embarrassed like, why are you doing that? You know what I mean? It's very complicated, right? I said, but if this was my place, 
or if I was, I'm in the equations, I say, I'll just give you. This is the way God feels about us. Lift your hands. What do you want? Whatever you want, whatever you need, whatever you want to have, it's available. I read you the scripture that says the earth is his, everything in the world is his, and he wants to share it with us. Freely you receive, freely give. And he said, it's my good pleasure to give my children the kingdom and everything in it. Lift your hands. So this is a time, this is an invitation from the boss to sow a seed that he will bless. I'm telling you he'll bless it. I'm, I'm guaranteeing the blessing on this because I heard from God, God said to me to tell, to tell this. And that's why I'm taking time to do this right now. So let's all do that. I love you very much. I'm not nearly done, but I'm going to wrap it there. See you on the next, uh, in the next broadcast, the next session. I'm praying for you in the great words of our beloved predecessor, Isaiah, in 48, 17. He says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go and must go. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. I'm Thomas Matthew LaFord. Please share this because this will enrich the lives of other people. It's a seed when you sow it. And I'm looking to hear from you. Prayer requests, I'm taking them. Write your prayer requests. Send your seed. If someone sent a 10,000 seed and said, please pray for me, I thought that's an honorable person. And the Lord will just bless them. You know how many people that are partners with the ministry, you also need to partner with us very well because people that partner, miracles happen for them before I even know the whole story. And they say, it must have been your prayers. I said, yeah, thumbs up. I'm praying all the time. You're flowing in the anointing. You're a partner. You've helped. And then anything you present to me in the realm of prayer, even for another person, they get the miracle. Nobody knows how it happened. Must have been the prayers. I said, yeah, but it's also your partnership and your connection. You're, you're doing proactive things in the anointing, and the anointing of God is doing proactive things for you. That's how it works. All right? Love you much. See you on the next, on the next show. Have a great day. Siku Jema.